welcome back to another video for our geometry. All right, so today we are going to talk about triangle inequalities. And what I want to start with is a little bit of vocabulary. Uh, I'm going to draw a triangle, but what I'm going to do for the third side, for one side, I'm going to extend it. And by doing this, I've created a fourth angle of a triangle. There are three angles in the triangle and a fourth angle. This triangle, excuse me, this angle is called an exterior angle. You may wonder where they got that name, right? It's on the exterior. And of course, the ones on the inside of the triangle are interior angles. All right, if this is the exterior angle here, then this is an interior angle, but it is called the adjacent interior angle. And these are also interior angles, but they are called remote interior angles. And I think I have done this in an earlier video. And for every vertex, you can actually make two exterior angles, right? So if I make a triangle and I extend this side, here is an exterior angle, but if I extend it this side, I would have made an, a, a different exterior angle. But what do you notice about this exterior angle? Exterior angle A and exterior angle B, right? What do you notice? Well, those are vertical angles, right? Because of the coming of the lines. So even though there are two exterior angles at every vertex, we usually only talk about one for every vertex. Okay? Now, I have an, a triangle with four angles, three interior angles and one exterior angle. Uh, let's start listing facts that we know are true about these. I know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. That's from last time. That's the triangle sum theorem, right? I also know that angle 3 and angle 4 are a LP, which is a linear pair, and I know that by definition of a linear pair. And since they're linear pair, angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. You remember what that's from? That's from that linear pair conjecture that we did before. And since they're supplementary, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. And I know that by definition of supplementary. Now, 3 and 4 equal 180. 1 and 2 plus 3 equals 180. So since this line, and maybe it makes sense if I numbered my lines. There's line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5. So it makes it easier, right? This proof is kind of easier to read as I, the more structure I, I put in place. Um, Line 1 and line 3 both equal 180, so I could say that measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. And what did I do? Yes, I did. That substitution. Now, 
I see an angle three here and angle three there. So I could subtract both those from the each side. And we would call that, uh, last year you called that the subtraction property of equality. And if you didn't want to do that, well, we could have to change it to and, and change it to the addition property. But we're adding a negative, the, the amount of negative three. Now, what have I shown in this proof? I have now I have proven that angle one plus the angle two is equal to angle four. And that notice that I did ha I had no measurements in here, but now one and two equals angle four. Now I want to combine my vocabulary terms with my proof, and those two are the interior angles, not next to that, and angle four is exterior angle. So this is our conjecture that the exterior angle measure for a triangle. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. And you may want to draw you know, a picture of that. Right, and if I know this is 80 degrees and I know this is 30 degrees, now I can jump really quickly and know that this one must be 50 degrees. And you can do it. Next on our list is looking at triangles and angles and a relationship between the two. So I'm going to start off with an equilateral triangle, and you know that an equilateral triangle. All the angles are congruent. In the, as a matter of fact, they're all 60 degrees. Well, what if it's a triangle that looks like an equilateral triangle, right? But one of them's 60, one of them's 59, and one of them's 61. Can you tell me which side is largest? Think about that. You can hit pause. Okay. Let's see if your answers match my answers. And can you tell me why, actually? All right, 60, that looked like, so that side, that angle didn't change from where we started. The 61, it's a little bit bigger, so it opened up, right? It went from 60 to 61. 59 went from 60 to 59. What does that do? Well, 60 stayed the same, 61 opened up, and if it opens up, doesn't it kind of make sense that this side has to expand from where it was? So well, from here to here, it had C had to be bigger than where we were, right? 59 whoop, moved a little closer. So A had to, had to shrink, you know, just a little bit. So what I, I think that C has to be the biggest side, B is in the middle, and A is the smallest side. And I would write that as C greater than B greater than A. And in fact, that's true, right? That's always true. Um, if, well, if I have a right triangle, that's easy, right? Biggest angle, that's the hypotenuse, right over here. Yeah, largest side, that's, that's the hypotenuse, right? Because it's the largest side of the triangle. And in a right triangle, it's always opposite the right angle. And if it's obtuse, the hypotenuse is opposite the obtuse angle. Well, how do we know where these fit in, right? Well, of course, if it's 30 here and 60 here, the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. And the middle is opposite the middle size. Not too bad, right? So what we call that, or what I'm going to call that, is called a side angle relationship. In a triangle, the side opposite the largest is the longest. The side opposite the smallest angle is the shortest. And of course, the side opposite the middle angle is going to be the middle. Now, Lastly, I'm going to start off with a quiz. All right, quick. I have three segments, 
five, eight, thirteen. How many triangles, unique triangles, different triangles, can I make with those with those three sides? Did you get it? Because the answer is none. Right? Because if this side is 5, this is 8, and this is 13, if I try to take that 5 and put it here, and I fit an 8 and put it here and swing an arc, oh, the only place that they would hit is right there. Does that make sense? I should draw that different. Here's the 13, and you know, if I put a 5 going this way, and it, you, no, that won't happen. That can't happen, right? Because the, if this is 8 long and this is 5 long, the, they won't reach. The only place that they'll touch is right there on the line, because 5 plus 8 is 13, right? So the only way to make a triangle is to change one of these side lengths, to make it so that they, they come off of the line. So if this was, let's say, 6, then I can make a triangle, right? 6, 8, 13 that can make a triangle. Uh, 5, 8, 13 cannot make a triangle. And of course, 4, 8, 13, things like that. So in a conjecture form for today, uh, the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. I think that you got that. We will do some investigation with that today, tomorrow, excuse me. And finally, I would like you to check your understanding and complete a couple of problems for me. I have number one where X is missing and I want you to find the angle measurement for X. Number two, I want you to find the angle measurement for A. And on three, I would like you to put in order the side links A, C, B. You can go back and look at the video and I think you can find the answer on this one. Okay, see you next time.